Hi friends, this is your ANR sir. Welcoming you to ANR Academy. Today we continue our yesterday's lesson. The name of this lesson is The Portrait of a Lady written by Kushwant Singh. And this story is for plus one CBSE students. Let us continue reading the story. My grandmother always went to school with me because the school was attached to the temple. The priest taught us the alphabet and the morning prayer. So, the narrator's grandmother used to accompany the narrator to the school. And what is the reason for that? The reason for that is the school teacher is a priest and the school is on the verandas of a temple. So grandmother used to carry her holy scripts like Mahabharata, Ramayana. While the narrator was attending his classes, grandmother read all those scripts. So this is the reason. That means she understood her responsibility. So in order to have any problem, grandmother used to accompany the child up to the school and she would see that the child gets proper education. While the children sat in rows on either side of the veranda, singing the alphabet or the prayer in a chorus, my grandmother sat inside reading the scriptures. When we had both finished, we would walk back together. This time, the village dogs would meet us at the temple door. So this is a daily habit. What is a daily habit? The dogs to wait at the steps of the temple for the grandmother to return. Grandmother used to carry some chapatis. Chapatis made on the previous night. And she used to feed these dogs Grandmother used to feed these dogs. That means it, it shows. Grandmother not only loves human beings but also the animals. And later we read she loves birds also. So all these things that means oh Loving animals and birds like human beings, this is a very good uh, quality. Because of this, grandmother looked more beautiful, though she is not pretty. Clear? They followed us to our home, growling and fighting with each other. For the chapatis we threw to them. So while walking back to home, mother, uh, grandmother and the narrator used to throw the chapati pieces to these dogs. And these dogs got fed by those uh, chapati pieces and they used to fight also at times to receive their share. When my parents were comfortably settled in the city, they sent for us. You see, when parents got uh, accommodation and everything, when they identified a school for the narrator to get admitted, they called. They asked, okay, now you can come. That was a turning point. Turning point means what? A change. What was the turning point? The turning point was 
shifting from village to the town shifting from the village to town that was the turning point in our friendship that means so from that point of time the gap between grandmother and the narrator started increasing also we shared the same room my grandmother no longer came to school with me now in cities the school would be far away from the residential areas so they have some buses to carry the children so that is the reason there is no necessity for the grandmother to accompany the narrator up to the school i used to go to an english school in a motor bus there were no dogs in the streets and she took to feeding sparrows in the courtyard of our house so now her tent table got changed a little bit now there is no point of accompanying the child so there is no point of leaving the house and to go somewhere so now she started feeding the sparrows feeding the sparrows which used to assemble in their courtyard as the years rolled by we saw less of each other you see slowly the gap between the grandmother and the child got increased slowly now uh in less period they used to see each other for sometimes she continued to wake me up and get me ready for school when i came back she would ask me what the teacher had taught me so in the beginning when this narrator got admitted in the city school grandmother used to ask what was taught on that day by the school teacher and the narrator used to tell i would tell her english words and little things of western science and learning he used to narrate everything that was taught during that day in the school the law of gravity or the wave principle like that the words the world being wrong etc so the narrator used to tell whatever the things he was taught in the school and all these things were new to this grandmother so now slowly the interest of asking about the lessons that were taught in the classroom got decreased slowly now slowly she stopped asking what was the talk clear this made her unhappy she could not help with me with my lessons now complete the syllabus got changed grandmother doesn't know all these things so her role of explaining the things to this boy is no more clear she did not believe in the things they taught at the english school and was distressed that there was no teaching about god and the scriptures so actually in our schools we do not teach anything about moral values we do not teach anything about uh, moral stories anything so when she has come to know about this she got unhappy she got unhappy but she could not do anything she could not do anything after all narrator's father has to look up for all these things so she kept silent she kept it silent clear she was very disturbed 
to have music had lewd associations. So one day, maybe the narrator said, today we were taught some music. Actually in those days, Gana Bajana. Gana Bajana actually it was a profession of some people, those you uh, lure people. Understood? By singing, they attract the people. Ladies, they have some wrong relationships with the gents. So, in those days, this music means no gentle family, children from gentle family learn music. Clear? So, she was not at all happy listening this. What? In the school, they were taught some music. To her, music had lewd associations. It was the monopoly of harlots. Harlots means what? The people, those who lure whom? Men. That means they extract money from them, keeping some illegal relations and beggars and not meant for gentle food. She said nothing but her silent meant disapproval. She didn't say anything. The reason is now this narrator's father has to take care of the narrator. Her role is over. Her responsibility is over. When they were in the village, it was her responsibility to see whether the narrator receives a proper education or not. Now in the city, her role is over. In the city, her role is over. Either the narrator's father or mother should take care of the narrator's studies. That is the reason she kept quiet. She kept silent. This is also a very important character trait for the grandmother. Understood? Actually, elderly people, they want that their voice should be listened. Clear? But here, this lady thought, why should I open my mouth when I am not responsible for that? So, she kept quiet. She didn't say anything. And her silence only talks about her disapproval. She said nothing, but her silence meant disapproval. She rarely talked to me after that. Now she thought, this boy, she cannot control this boy. Understood? So why to have unnecessary arguments? She kept, she kept quiet and from that day onwards she didn't put her finger in the narrator's education studies. When I went up to university, I was given a room of my own. You see, when this narrator entered into university, that means post-graduation, his bed or his room got separated. He was given a special room. Till then, narrator used to sleep along with grandmother. And the day he joined in the university, he was given a special room because he needs a special room. He needs some privacy. He needs some uh, space to read, to concentrate on his studies. The common link of friendship was snatched. So that was only a link between the grandmother and the grandchild. What? Room. Both uh, stayed in the same room. And from that day onwards, that link also got cut. My 
grandmother accepted her situation with resignation. So she, she didn't say anything very happily. She said, okay, you need a separate room. Okay, be there. I'm happy here. Like that she didn't argue. She didn't say anything. Very coolly she accepted. She accepted the fish. She has that quality. What? To get adjusted to the situation. To get adjusted. So this thing we need. We do not see this thing in maximum elderly people. In each and everything they want their presence. In each and every topic they want that their word is to be taken as granted. But this narrator's grandmother, she adjusts herself according to the situation. Understood? So, the elderly people should have this. Okay, very good. Let me have a change in my attitude. Maximum people, they do not think like this. She rarely left her spinning wheel to talk to anyone. Now, she made a timetable. She had a spinning wheel. You see, from cotton, we weave thread. Nowadays, we do not see all these things. In olden days, we see. A very big wheel would be there. From one end they feed cotton and they get the, uh, thread from this cotton. So from sunrise to sunset she sat by her wheel spinning and reciting prayers. Listen. She knew how to engage herself. Understood? She knew how to engage. So now, completely throughout the day, she used to sit and she used to spin. She used to make threads from cotton. And while doing that, she used to do her prayers also. Only in the afternoon, she relaxed for a while to feed the sparrows. Listen. Relaxing means not taking rest, sleeping. Relaxing doesn't mean taking rest or laying on the bed. No. Relaxing means what? You should change your work. Understood? You see, nowadays, 24 hours is not enough for children to complete their reading. Everybody would say, everybody would have only one complaint. What is that? We do not have time. Everybody says, understood, time, you should take, understood, you should make some time. You see, if you want to have any relaxation, just you should change the work. Suppose for two hours you are reading physics. You got bored. Take a mathematics book and do some problems. Clear? Yeah, like that, you should have some change of a topic, subject. Clear? Yeah, time is in your hands. So, only in the afternoon, she relaxed for a while to feed the sparrows. In the village, she used to feed the street dogs. 
in the city, she started feeding the sparrows. While she sat in the veranda, breaking the bread into little bits. That means she used to keep some bread. Pieces of bread. And she used to spray that. Spread that. To whom? To the sparrows. Hundreds of little birds collected round hair. You see, these sparrows also know their time. We say that human beings are very, very intelligent because they have a brain. But animals and birds are more intelligent than human beings. At the end of the lesson we learn that. Understood? So all the birds, hundreds of birds used to gather there to have their share. And when you have so many birds, naturally a lot of Chirping would be there. Confusion. Understood? Lot of uh, chirping. They make some, produce some sound. Some came and perched on her legs. You see, these birds, they rest on grandmother's legs, on her shoulders, on her head. All these things say that they do not fear grandmother. They do not fear grandmother simply by seeing these animals come to know whether uh, the intention of the person only by seeing uh, this person would harm. He is a friendly person. Like that by seeing, by simple look, they can identify that. So because they knew very well that grand, there is no danger from grandmother. So she used to, these birds used to perch on grandmother's legs, shoulders on hand. She smiled, but never showed them away. <laughs> she used to smile, seeing those birds coming very closer to her and perching on her body. It used to be the happiest of ever of the day for her. So, like that, daily half an hour, grandmother used to spend her time with the birds. Remain part we do it tomorrow. I think you enjoyed my teaching. Really if you enjoy my teaching, do not forget to subscribe to my channel English for All Examinations. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.